Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today, I'm going to be giving an honest review on the Harbor Freight Concrete Mixer. I personally have ran over 100,000 pounds of material through this thing. Um, if you don't believe me, I have proof. Well, not all 100,000 pounds, it's well over 100,000 pounds actually. But uh, some of the proof is uh, I built this pad, I poured this pad with it. So you guys know how crazy I am. There's a video of me doing a time lapse, lapse of that. Um, it was around 830, 80 pound bags. Um, I built a 12 by 16 pad for my little girl's playhouse. I built air conditioning pads. I built propane tank pads. I built hydrant pads. I have a video of me about two weeks ago using it to uh, fill a, a ballast for a tractor ballast box up with concrete. Um, I've used the heck out of this thing. And I've also let people borrow it. Um, I let a guy borrow it that I'm friends with and he built a 100 feet long by 8 feet tall brick retaining wall and he used this mixer for all of the mortar. Um, needless to say, this thing has been used a lot, so I can kind of attest to it. It's pretty, it's pretty durable. Um, I'll kind of go over a couple things that I had to beef up or modify, and I'll explain why I did that. Um, you guys may never get to that point. I mean, this thing's probably got 10 years or more of a residential user, so it'll at least last you that long. Um, and one more thing I want to state before people start asking all the questions. I'm limping around. I haven't been out of the house in six days. It's the first day I've been able to walk for six days. Um, I had something that weighs over a thousand pounds land on my leg. Really scared I broke something somehow, magically I didn't break anything, but I tore a lot of tendons in my ankle and my leg. So that's why I'm limping around if you're wondering. Uh, let's get into the review. So here is my mixer. It doesn't exactly look like the one you're gonna get from Harbor Freight. Um, as you can see, the first thing is the wheels are different. Uh, the wheels that came on mine, well, let me explain this. When, this. when this thing's spinning, you know, you got all that weight picking up, slopping down, picking up, slopping down, it's mixing it. Well, with all that movement, the whole thing rocks like this. And over time, the wheels that came on it were actually starting to bend and bend and bend. And I don't remember exactly which one, but one of them actually almost bent completely in two. And when that happened, the other one started bending. And I said, well, I was in the middle of a project and I needed to modify these things pretty quick. Um, luckily, I had those two wheels that are on it right now. I got those from Harbor Freight. I had them sitting on a shelf. Um, I, I keep things like this sitting around just in case. And luckily, I had them. Anyways, um, they didn't exactly fit on their perfect, so don't, don't buy these thinking you can throw them on. I actually had to get the, the gray steel with the white cap sticking out. Um, came off of like a pool ladder or something. I just cut it off real quick, you know, drilled a hole, bolted on there, and I was back to work. It didn't take me too long. Normally when I do something, it looks a little prettier than that. I know it's kind of ugly sticking out, but that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to get the point across that those wheels did come from Harbor Freight, but they're not like a direct bolt-on. You have to do a little modification to get them to fit on there. But the wheels that came on it were not too good. Um, but like I said, if you're not planning on running 100,000 pounds through this thing, they're great, okay? I mean, if you're only doing it for a small pad or something like that, you're not, you're not gonna really need to worry about it much. But if you're gonna be using this thing crazy, I would probably recommend just going ahead and taking the wheels off and preventing that from happening because you don't want the wheels to break when you're in the middle of a project. And that this brings me to the next point. I think, don't hold me to it, but I think um, to get me through that project, I made this piece of wood right here. I just got some angle brackets and I made this height the same height as what's on the front of it so it'll be level when I'm mixing. But you see how they're perfectly straight up through there? Um, I was able to get this piece of wood and stick it under this bar right here so it held it up level off the ground. So that the thing wasn't tipping over now that i'm talking i actually do i remember i did that way before because um i needed a way to lift this thing up high enough to where i could push a wheelbarrow under it and fill the wheelbarrow up and go to where i was you know working at because i was on a really steep i remember that day because i was in a really really steep like lake lot and i was building a retaining wall and i was getting the concrete down to it with wheelbarrows and mixing up with this um anyways long story short it's not high enough for a wheelbarrow, so you do need to bolt like a 6x6. Six six. And then I had to add a 6x6 six six and a couple pieces of decking boards to get it level with that. <clears throat> um, I, think, I think I got everything I needed to say about that. The next thing you'll notice is some black here and there. Right there. Right there. I think there's some down there. You probably won't experience this because, like I said, I used it so much. But things to look for is cracking in the frame like some of the frame was actually starting to come apart from like i previously mentioned the rocking um this thing is actually wearing you know tearing itself apart so i just went a few places and tack welded it and i just had black spray paint so i spray painted it 
not that big of a deal doesn't look that bad i don't really care because it still functions right um this right here see how this little gear cog right here spins i can't really spin it that good. there we go see how it's spinning i always spray before i use this some kind of dry lubricant and you want to use dry lubricant so when you're mixing your concrete dust uh or mortar or whatever it is you're mixing it doesn't get stuck in here and make a disaster um, I just spray a dry lubricant in here so you don't have metal on metal. Um, so far, there's not too much wear. You can kind of see the wear. But like I said, I've run a lot through this thing. Speaking of that gear cog, um, I had a lot of people that I talked to. This thing came loose and they lost the screw or lost the nuts or the washer. Not the nuts, but the, uh, the washers and lock washers. Um, I kind of saw that as a problem before I even used the thing. So I just went ahead and put some blue Loctite. You don't want to use red Loctite because red Loctite locks the thing in. Um, you want to use blue Loctite for that screw right there. And uh, it'll just hold it in. I've not had it come out at all. A lot of people were complaining about the thing coming out. I have not had it come out and I've used it a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, another thing that I know is going to go out soon is there's a bearing right here. And I'm not sure if you guys can hear the camera, but when it's spinning unloaded for whatever reason it doesn't do it loaded but i can hear that bearing like it's like you can hear the ball inside of it you know what i mean I, if you guys know what a bearing sounds like going bad you'll know what i'm talking about but i know that that bearing is going to go bad soon and i've not taken this apart yet or i don't really i'm not going to get into that because it's not what this video is about but i do hear this bearing going out and i'm going to have to take this assembly off and probably this right here to get to it it's probably like a ten dollar bearing or something probably not that expensive but it is going bad and like i said you probably won't experience that i've used the heck out of it i know i keep saying that but i want to get the point across i'm not bashing this thing i love this thing i'm just showing you things that'll wear out and things to kind of look for um before it happens another thing is there's a motor i think the motor's on the bottom i don't know it doesn't matter there's a motor somewhere i imagine it's right here because the switch is right here and there's a belt and there's a pulley I've talked to quite a few people and I actually ordered one myself. This motor has a starting capacitor and I've talked to quite a few people that the, um, the start capacitors actually went bad. And you can, st if the start capacitor go bad, you can still start it. You just turn the switch on and rotate it, but it's probably not good to do that. Well, matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, it's not good to do that. I mean, it'll get you by if you're in the middle of something, but don't do it. Don't continuously do that. Cause when you turn that switch on motor, I mean, power is going to that motor. If it's not starting up, it's just sitting there cooking itself so get an extra start capacitor i'm not sure the size or anything like that um if you get this thing just take these three screws off and there's a start capacitor you can look at the number on it or you might kind of matter of fact you can probably get on the harbor freight website look at like a like a parts diagram it'll show you what size capacitor and stuff you need so you don't need to order it from harbor freight because they're probably more expensive you can get off of ebay or amazon or something probably ebay is cheaper ebay is cheaper with things like that for whatever reason um that being said there's a belt that occasionally comes loose uh you put a lot of weight inside of this thing and it's not spinning but you hear the motor spinning it can only be the belt and unless this thing has fell off if you didn't listen to me and put the blue lock tight um the, the belt's really simple to tighten there's uh i don't know if you can see see these four bolts right here you just loosen those and you can slide the motor whichever direction you need to go i'm pretty sure that's how it works i don't remember i haven't taken the cover off so this clip right here of me talking, I kind of cut in the middle of my other video. Uh, I went in to start editing it, so I want to explain something real quick. Not that big of a deal, but it bothers me. So these four screws right here that I pointed at earlier, the, this actually is the motor down here. Okay, and it makes sense. Why would the motor be right there if there's a belt? That makes no sense. Anyways, these four screw or bolts actually is what you use to adjust the belt to be lined up with this uh the pulley up here that's connected to this obviously um you want to that's very important i'm glad that i kind of made that mistake or whatever so i could kind of give you guys an idea it's very important to keep that belt as close to perfect as you can level it'll prevent it'll keep it just it'll keep it wearing even um this thing's not high speed or anything like that it shouldn't be generating a lot of heat but the belt will be a lot happier with you and it'll last a lot longer if you have it lined up with that pulley and a motor um, the way you adjust the tension is actually these two right here. You loosen these, and that actually allows the motor to be pulled down 
and when you pull the motor down it adds tension to the belt i just wanted to clarify that up okay back to the original video i've only had to adjust this thing twice when it's brand new when belts are brand new they always stretch it's completely normal don't call it a piece of junk if it happens it's normal for a belt to stretch when it's new so after you use it for some time when it's brand new <clears throat> just tighten the belt it's probably going to come loose again tighten it again it should be good like i said i'm only had to tighten it twice um other than that some people were talking about the paint. Some I've talked to a lot of people about this thing because of my other video. A lot of people were saying something about the paint from the inside was coming off and chipping into their pad and they would see it. I haven't had that problem because I think the first time I used this thing, I was doing footers or something. And you know, footers, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna see that because you're covering it up. But I think it was something like that in that case. So I did not notice the paint coming off. That may happen to you. I don't know. All my paint is pretty much, you can see all my paint where that concrete sloshed around in there, it's pretty much wore off. Okay. I can't think of anything else that I could tell you about this thing other than if you plan on using it a heck of a lot, upgrade the wheels. If you're going to be using a wheelbarrow, get your 6x6, cut it like I did there, put a level on it, all that type of stuff. I, I don't know if the wheelbarrows are a standard height, so I'm not going to measure that and tell you what it is. You can kind of look. It's just a six by six and three five quarter inch decking boards. That's what that is right there. And that's just a six by six. And for whatever reason, the front was um, lower than the back. I think. Don't hold me to that without measuring. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of talking, a lot of winded talking. <laughs> um, but I highly recommend this thing. Can't recommend it enough. Especially if you're using it like, you know, if you're a homeowner or something like that. You just want to save some money. Because you don't want to have to pay for like a minimum cement. Because truck, uh, cement companies charge you like a minimum load. I can't remember if it's like two or three yards. If you don't need that much concrete, get this. It'll pay for itself the first couple of times. Thank you guys for watching my video. I really appreciate you taking the time. Please like it. Comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um. I'm going to start doing a lot more in detail videos. My YouTube channel is pretty new. So if you watch some of my, first, my beginning ones, I'm not really too detailed about it or um, my editing may not be the best, but I'm getting better every day. I appreciate you guys. See you in the next one.